So this is a really good, this is a good point on sex for Mike. And I thought this was very good and interesting and something that we don't really experience that much of. Um, at least we may with, a, with one person, but certainly not with many people. So this is on 419. And this is Mike speaking, of course. So he says, um, that alone was a triumph. Male femaleness is the greatest gift we have. Romantic physical love may be unique to this planet. If it is, the universe is a poorer place than it could be. And I grok dimly that we who are God will save this precious invention and spread it. The joining of bodies with merging of souls in shared ecstasy, giving, receiving, delighting in each other. Well, there's nothing on Mars to touch it, and it's the source. I grok in fullness of all that makes this planet so rich and wonderful. And Jubal, until a person, man or woman, has enjoyed this treasure bathed in the mutual bliss of minds linked as closely as bodies. That person is still as virginal and alone as if he had never copulated. I thought that was very a very good way of describing it. Again, this, what he calls moving closer. So you can have friends that you have kind of friends on an intellectual level or historical level. Um, even your own spouse can be someone that you have sex with, of course, and join. But he's saying that really to, to what did he say? It was like linking um, mutual bliss of minds linked as closely as bodies. And it seems to make sense, especially with this idea of the whole person that we are not just our brains walking around. Some people say that, some, as other people feel, that really their bodies are just their movement, they're just their, their way of getting their brains around, kind of thing. Um, you are, like, who are you? You are supposed to be not just your brain, but the rest of you. And although some people think that we're really just our brains, because if you chop off body parts, you still are alive, but if you lose your brain, that's it. And if you were to have a brain transplant, you would be a different person, right? It wouldn't be you. But anyways, um, there's this idea of the body should be as intimately linked with the mind, with other people. And the most, the closest one can be with another person is to have sex with them. And... The metaphor, or I mean, not the metaphor, but the whole idea, of course, putting yourself inside someone is a way of linking together, right? Like physically, literally. But it's not just about that. It's also about the spirituality of, and the feeling, and the immense pleasure of being with someone that night kind of thing. So, again, like I've, like I've been saying, spirituality for this, for Mike's cult, is seems to me more and more very much the opposite of our modern religion spirituality so i thought that was the probably the best part of the book is this manufacturing of this religion which is so different um than modern religions that that preach sacrifice and depravity and that man has fallen and man is disgusting and we are screwed. We're all screwed, and just do good. Do your best, and then we'll get to the next life. And uh, it's all Adam and Eve's fault. They lived in paradise. Maybe they had. Maybe you know, Adam and Eve actually lived like Mike's cult, and then they learned too much, and then they got kicked out of Utopia, and then now they live in depravity, and we're all, you know, we live in disease and pestilence and famine, and we live in a hard world. And we're just supposed to, it's all our fault, original sin, right? All our fault. And we're just supposed to pray and sacrifice and do this, all this stupid stuff. But Mike has a much more positive view of humanity that we, we humans have everything we need to have a good and spiritual life. So very different, very different than modern religions. So now I have one more. And it's on the same topic. So this is on the next page, so I'll read it. I think this probably is still Mike speaking. Um, yes, I think this is Mike speaking. That's what sexual union should be. 
But that's what I slowly grokked it rarely was. Instead, it was indifference and acts mechanically performed and rape and seduction as a game no better than roulette, but less honest and prostitution and celibacy by choice and by no choice and fear and guilt and hatred and violence and children brought up to think that sex was bad and shameful and animal and something to be hidden and always distrusted. This lovely, perfect thing, male femaleness, turned upside down and inside out and made horrible. So that's a good way of kind of summing up the, the modern religious view of sex and, hu and the human body, really, and Mike's view. Now, the only little caveat I would add is that Hopefully, Mike, and this is supposed to be in the future, but hopefully Mike, or I'm sure the cult has lots of birth control because that's kind of an outcome that, you know, it's possible, uh, which complicates things. But with, that, with birth control, uh, then this can go on and this can be fine. But anyways, that, like I said, I think that's the most, the most urgent message of the book. There's, a, like I said, there's a lot of loose threads and maybe they're not loose threads in the full manuscript of the book, because this is the edited version. But in this Mike's view, this religion, that I mean, the main point I get from this book is that of this of Mike's religion, this is very different, as I've been describing. So that those are my main points from Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein.